But now to the art of the past. Over 2,000 years ago, the second Jewish temple was destroyed. The music and instruments of the high point in Jewish music were also lost. That is, until Australian composer Kim Cunio and Israeli sculptor Moshe Fruman brought the period back to life, recreating both music and instruments from biblical texts and ancient artefacts. Here's the Temple Project. The Temple Project is, is an idea essentially and it's an idea that there is a way to give a flavour of what music was 2000 years ago. We had quite a vast sort of musical thing happening and a lot of the Roman Empire had took great stock of what was happening in Judea. But then the, a great Jewish revolt took place and there was always a very militant section to, to Jewish culture. They resisted the Romans incredibly well for a long time but the Romans destroyed the Temple in 70 Common Era and then essentially what happened was instrumental music or the temple music was disbanded within a generation. I was very excited to hear about that Moshe Fruman had made 18 instruments based on the, the second temple and about a year ago the Jewish Museum and myself heard about these instruments and so then we decided well this is the impetus really the heart behind a new project like this. <laughs> שני הדברים התחברו ביחד ויצרו את המומנט לפרויקט הזה. יש הרבה מאוד מטבעות, בעיקר מטבעות וממצאים ארכיאולוגיים, שמראים כלי נגינה. ומאחר ואני במשך שנים רבות עוסק בבניית כלי נגינה מחומרים שונים, שני הדברים האלה הצטרפו יחד, גם הפיסול, גם העיסוק שלי במוזיקה וגם האהבה למסורת, והם התחברו ביחד. Moshe had gone to incredible lengths as a visual artist to, to match you know, what the instruments were like and essentially he'd done that from things like base reliefs, from archaeological finds, from descriptions in historical works like the Mishnah. הלכתי לבדואים, שהם, המסורת שלהם היא בערך בת אלפיים שנה, למדתי מהם איך הם מותחים את המיתרים של הכלים, שייתכן והם דומים לכלים שהיו לפני אלפיים שנה. אוכלוסייה נוספת שבאה לארץ, באה לישראל מאתיופיה, עולים חדשים מאתיופיה, שגם שם המסורת שהם יהודים של מסורת של אלפי שנים, וגם מהם למדתי איך הם מותחים את המיתרים. And he was still not quite in tune. Like, it might be that I'm pushing sharp, but can you just check yourself? When the instruments did arrive, they were more limited than I thought in terms of harmonic and melodic possibilities. They're beautiful to feel and to hold and to play, but they don't sound big. And I was expecting a bigger sound. And I suppose maybe that's because I've worked with traditional instruments, which are modern versions of ancient instruments rather than ancient instruments. And so then the next part of the process was to think, well, are there surviving traditional instruments that can be used to augment the instruments of Mr. Fruman? And there are a number. I think it is important that as a composer in this project I know the history of the instruments and with Jewish music unlike our Egyptian and Greek music there's no plans or specifications or you know, detailed pictures. Even with the pictures that have survived it is quite likely that um, they have been augmented or changed slightly by, by the people who have drawn them.
Well, let's take the opening of the Shema again. I'm just not entirely sure how we actually structure this. So. I think a, a lot of the uh, issues that have come up for us have been cultural. Like, for example, how do you take things that have been used for a cultural worship sense and then turn them into art? Well, in order to try and work this process out without hard evidence, there, there were a number of things I had to do. One was to actually imagine. And I think with this project, that's why I describe it as a realisation, not a reconstruction. And by realisation, I mean it's an artistic process that takes into account all the historical research that has been done, but then it has to have a point of departure where it says, this is art. This is an artistic response to what music may have sounded like by no means does it hold itself up as that music. And I think that's important. In the temple and in that time, essentially it was a, was a male-run system. Women had no official role in the worship, although women did have a very important role in the music of ancient Israel. But at the same time then, I had to decide, do we want to use women in this? And of course, I feel that I'd like to use the woman's voice. And so that essentially, as soon as that decision was made, it's a big move away from the realm of historical accuracy into historical hearsay. So in a sense it's what Mosh is doing by bringing these instruments here is I hope he's inspiring a whole new movement in Australian instrument making and design as well, which is very exciting. <laughs>